Okay, so here is a picture of Annabelle sitting on the edge of the dollhouse. And it sounds like the dollhouse, they say it's on a shelf, but I'm thinking it's like on a table. So maybe it's two and a half feet up in the air and that would be a long way for a China doll to drop because remember, China is breakable. So let's keep going. The next morning, the moment Kate's house had emptied, Annabelle said, Mama, why don't we ever leave our house? Leave our house, Mama, re Mama repeated. Why, Annabelle, you know the answer to that. I know you say it's because it isn't safe, Annabelle began. It most certainly is not, said Nanny. How would you leave the house anyway, Annabelle? Annabelle, who was sitting on the floor of the parlor, with her legs dangling over the edge, looked below her. It was a long way down. The shelf on which the dollhouse sat was in a corner of Kate's room. Just below it was a wooden stool. It was four steps high, painted with pink roses. The top step was just two inches under the shelf. Kate used the stool to reach the rooms on the top floor of the dollhouse, although no one, uh, although she no longer needed it for the rooms on the first floor. Sometimes she slid the stool under the shelf, but it was out now, and Annabelle studied it. I bet I could get down the steps of the stool, she said, leaning over. Her mom's not going to like that. Oh, Annabelle, said Mama, how would you get back up the steps? Each one is higher than you, and if you fell, you'd land on hard floor. You'd crack your head open, added Bobby. I just think I could do it. How did Auntie Sarah leave the house, asked Annabelle. Nobody else knows about that. For a moment, no one spoke. Annabelle looked intently at her parents. Annabelle, said Papa at last, leaving the house is dangerous. The captain, you didn't answer my question, Annabelle persisted. Oh, persisted, that's a good word for said. How did Auntie Sarah leave? I know she left. Oh, that was so long ago, said Mama. Yes, she did used to leave, but I, I have an idea. How about having a sing-along right now? It's a bit risky, but I think we can get away with it. Her mom's trying to change the subject, isn't she? What do you mean Auntie Sarah used to leave the house, interrupted Bobby. She did, said Annabelle, all by herself. Is that true? Bobby turned to Mama and Papa. She really did? Mama and Papa glanced at each other, then at Uncle Doll, and Uncle Doll, to Annabelle's surprise, glared back at them. So they both looked at him like, what do you want us to say? And he went. Why, said Bobby, why, why did she do that? I mean, what did she do while she was out of the house? Where did she go? And Annabelle, how do you know she used to do that? Everyone now turned to Annabelle. Silence. Well, how about the sing-along, said Mama brightly. We can start off with respect, added Papa. No, said Annabelle. I want to know something. Didn't anybody ever look for Auntie Sarah after she disappeared? Why, of course, Annabelle. We searched this house from top to bottom, replied Papa. But you didn't look for her outside of the house? Out, out there? Annabelle gestured to Kate's room and to the hallway beyond. Well, as we've said, that would have been very dangerous, said Papa. <laughs> Uncle Doll turned his head away. But it was Auntie Sarah, said Annabelle, glancing curiously at her uncle. If I were missing, wouldn't you look for me? Goodness, Annabelle, I don't think you're going to go missing, said, said Danny. I could. Something could happen to me and I could disappear and I could be in great danger. The captain could climb up on the stool and run off with me. Or Nora could take me and lose me somewhere. And I would hope you would look for me. She's really upset. But Annabelle, said Nanny, you know full well that that would put us in danger. We could wind up in doll state or permanent doll state. But after I was missing for so long, wouldn't you look for me? Mama, Papa, wouldn't you? Mama and Papa looked at each other, then at Nanny. Uncle Doll glared at all three of them. No one said a word. Annabelle's scared. She's thinking, what if something happened to her? Like, what if the captain grabbed her? Like, a cat could grab a little doll and run off with it. And then what if they didn't look for her? Because they're afraid. They're not mean, but they're afraid of what would happen to them. Wow. Let's keep going. 
How about respect, suggested Bobby in a small voice. Still, no one said a word. That night, long after Kate had gone to sleep and Mama had said it was all right to move about the house, Annabelle lay on her bed, refusing to speak to anyone. Her family left her alone and she pulled Auntie Sarah's journal out from under the covers. Annabelle skipped ahead a few pages and read that Auntie Sarah was planning a nature study exploration. She squinted down at the fine pen marks on the page, frustrated at having to read such exciting words by Kate's nightlight only. I need to develop a greater understanding of the creatures in this house, Auntie Sarah had written, and Annabelle realized she meant the human's house, not the doll's house. Annabelle thought about this for a while. Then she snapped the journal shut, slid it under the covers, and marched out of the nursery and down the stairs to the parlor. There she found the rest of her family. The adults and Bobby were talking quietly while baby Betsy was leaning against the piano, playing with the stuffed bunny. Here's what they all look like. Got it? See Annabelle there with her hands on her hips? Annabelle stood still and looked at everybody. She had her hands on her hips. After a moment, she said, I have an announcement to make. I am going to search for Auntie Sarah. Everyone began talking at once. Oh, no, said Mama. Annabelle, you can't, said Nanny. Right now, asked Uncle Bo. That isn't safe, said Papa. Annabelle thought about brave Auntie Sarah. She thought about Amelia Earhart and Eleanor Roosevelt and Nancy Drew. I'm going anyway, she said. The rest of the dolls sat in stunned silence. At last, Uncle Doll rose to his feet. Well, Annabelle, if you are going to go no matter what, he said slowly, then I am going.